Yeah, welcome to the New Indian Express debate. You know, today I read this news item that another 19-year-old uh, child had committed suicide in Kota. I've also gathered information that over the last 10 years, 2001 to, is it about 2001 to, yeah, no, I don't, really? Uh, in the last 10 years, student suicides have gone up by 70%, 70%. So the, the stressors which I, I, I discover are parental pressure, uh, self-doubt and, you know, the pressure you put on yourself and, uh, you know, ragging is a huge issue, especially caste-related. And third is, uh, you know, emotional connections, depression, etc., etc. So, how much has changed? Why this increase in, why this increase? I mean, is it because of the economic liberalization, more, more, more jobs opening up? I mean, why, why this increase? I mean, what do you want to ask? I said, what is the, what is the reason of the increase in suicides by 70% in 10 years? In, in my viewpoint as a psychologist, I find patience, tolerance, and perseverance seem to have gone down with the activities of daily life. Mm -hmm. So, inability to maintain healthy interpersonal relationships can be the major cause. So, is there, is, there, is there something wrong with the syllabus? Is it, is it something wrong with the syllabus? I, I think let, let's uh, step back a bit, you know, because I think there's always a danger of us uh, jumping to solutions based on anecdotal stuff. And I wanted to, uh, you know, first of all, I want to thank uh, you for organizing and discussing suicides. This is, uh, there's always an omerta about suicides in our country. We don't talk about it except when it comes in a headline because there's right. one person who's died by suicide. Uh, but let's have a more sensible conversation about it. Uh, what do we know about suicides in India? And the, some of the data is important to know is that under the age of 18, we have about, you know, if you say student suicides these days, yeah, and if I ask you a word, give me one word, student suicides, people will say quota. Uh, we, right. Because that's how people talk, uh, you think of it. But the reality is that under the age of 18, quota, ha you know, India has about 11,000, 10 to 11,000 suicides. Quota is only 200 suicides. Okay. Uh, so I think we really need to be actually asking ourselves what else is going on which is wrong or not happening properly. The other important factor is that it's always the suicides that come into the newspapers with young children or uh, adolescents is boys. But the reality is that it's actually more girls dying of suicide under that age. Uh, the other fact that we don't really talk about, and this is extremely worrying, is that, you know, if you are a young woman aged 19 to 39 or 20 to 40 in this country, the number one cause of death today is suicide in that age group. It is ahead of maternal mortality. For many years, we had maternal mortality as a problem, but now it no longer is. Uh, for, for boys, young men, it is number two cause after accidents. Uh, so clearly, you know, suicides are a, are a major crisis for us, uh, and we don't really we don't collect good quality data. Uh, we don't do uh, look at research around what might be causing it. And we don't also do some interventions which are cheaply and easily available for which there's good evidence we should be doing, which we don't do. I mean, Tamil Nadu is a great example of a policy initiative which reduced suicides, okay? Uh, introduction of the supplementary exam after the board exams has reduced suicides in that particular age group by about 50%, while the number of students taking that exam over 10 years is double. Yeah, but it still doesn't answer my question, why? Why has it gone up in 10 years? What do you think? The, the cause can be uh, attributed to both larger factors like economic factors and also changes in the individual. It is multifactorial. Cause for the suicide cannot be pinpointed to one mm -hmm. or two. See, the economy is changing. We are, we are becoming more materialistic. Um, the e job insecurity has grown. Even though I have a job, uh, my, the, I will, I will, I, there is no assurance that I will stay in the job till my retirement. So the insecurity in the job, 
job market, economic, major economical changes happening in the globe has an inf impact on the individual. And also the individual changes are important. Sa families have become very small, only one kid or two kids. And if there is a one, not one kid, the, both the parents always pamper the kid. Everything is provided. So the kid never ex experienced any failure in the life or any disappointment in the life. When they go to the high school or college, when they face the loss for the first time, when they face a crisis or disappointment, uh, they don't have the capacity or skills to face it. So these are all changes in the individuals and changes in the uh, greater society. Both are responsible in increasing the suicides. Um, you mentioned about bullying in campus. <laughs> And that is something that I wanted to address. When we, the topic today is about what can institutes do. So when we talk about institute, it doesn't mean just the management. It means management, administrative staff, faculties, lab technicians, right from the security. Everybody has an ownership to ensure a collaborative work environment. Now, is that happening? So let me talk with the uh, start with the peers first. Are you okay is a sense of comfort. The friends need not say, I will be there for you, because they may not have solutions to the problems that one may face. But can they do their best to recognize the warning signals when somebody is isolating, personal hygiene, poor personal hygiene, you know, can they focus on that and take them, empower them to seek professional help? You see, most of the institutions in the West uh, have uh, psychologists on campus who are either trained to counsel students who are in distress or teachers who are in distress. How many of them are… I, 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 I don't… I'm not aware of them as a wide presence in our educational institutions. Uh, you know, I think, I think, see, this is what happens is that, that the psychologist is part of a stepped care program that you might have. Uh, imagine if you wanted to treat… Uh, people with respiratory infections, you wouldn't say, okay, we have, uh, how many respiratory specialists we have. It actually starts at a very simple level. And I'll give you an example of a very well-based, evidence-based program, which all countries run, but which we don't run, uh, is gatekeeper training programs for school teachers. These are very brief programs. They're two hours of three hours of training to teach teachers to identify kids who might be at risk of suicide. Now, all countries across the world do this as a routine part of training teachers to be doing it. It costs nothing or costs very little, but we don't do it. Uh, the problem with just saying, let's have the psychologists in the this, in this colleges, and, I, and I've talked to plenty of psychologists, and what, what psychologists will say is that nobody comes to me. Because imagine you're a 20-year-old or a 21-year-old or even a 15-year-old, and you're going to go through a, into a room which says psychologist, you know, your, your credibility with your peers is destroyed completely. Uh, so actually what we should be doing and which is what we're trying to do with some programs is develop peer counseling services. You know, the 21-year-old actually does not trust the 40-year-old as much as he trusts or she trusts the 25-year-old. You know, the two-year senior to them is seen as God. Uh, so if you yeah. can work with peer counselors, it's actually a better way to access kids No, I mean, trouble. if the peer counselors are also trained in psychology, yes. it would be better because, see, there is this tremendous prejudice I see among Indians. Uh, uh, but Ravi, I'm not done with the bullying yet. Ah. <laughs> it's a very important because student population is here and I want to address that. Okay, thank you. See, we find certain things funny with our friends. The way they walk, the way they talk, the way they clothe themselves. The, their sexual orientation, their habits. But when we make jokes about it, is that making the other person, our friend, comfortable? We think on that. Are we mindful of that? Are we having ex, uh, uh, fun at our friend's expense? This leads to bullying, and we know several cases of suicide due to bullying. So. I would request the peers to be more mindful, be sensitive and sensible when you cut jokes about your friends. That will be the first tip that I would give because when we talk about institutes, I'm talking about the peers. He talked about faculty. I will have all, Dr. All the I, I, I want to come back to you in a question because uh, time is short. You know, there is this general prejudice among huge, especially as India grows larger, against Western high schools. Okay, I mean like, especially elite schools, there seems to be tremendous prejudice 
oh, you know, only rich people go there, or, you know, it's, it's true also, rich people go there. But, uh, I mean, they send their children there. But the fact of the matter is that they have a certain more uh, sensitivity to, 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 to the mood, uh, the psychology of children. See, for example, the other day at Woodstock, I mean, I live between Missouri and Delhi, so in, in Woodstock, which is a, one of the elite mm -hmm. schools, they have a psychologist on board. And they have regular counseling for children and for students and for teachers, right? So while I agree with the fact that there is a prejudice kind of, you know, like people think, okay, if you go to a psychologist only if you're nuts, okay, that is another pressure point. But the fact is that how do you incorporate mental counseling? Because you can see the signs there. I mean, the kid is disturbed. This kid is feeling pressure. It could be kind of, I mean, the second thing I want to come to is parents. So I want to find out whether you have you ever thought that it would be practical. Yes. Every school, every college, if have a counseling guidance and counseling center with the counselor, me, need not be a qualified psychologist. A person can be trained to become a counselor, school counselor or a college counselor. Needs uh, Every college, every institution needs a counseling center. Depending upon the number of students, there should be number of counselors. They will be able to address the uh, distress among the students. But that alone is not sufficient. Every student and every faculty should be trained to have a humanness in their communication. Mm. After, after the gadgets in the last 10 years, we, we, we don't talk, we text. We see the screen rather than we see the faces. So human communication has to be improved. I, every student should be trained to detect uh, sadness or distress in the fellow students. If every student has been modified in that way, for example, one, one hour a week or one hour in a fortnight, if they are trained in that skills, they, it will be improving the deduction of distressed individuals. So every okay, student... I, I need to ask him a question. Yeah. Go on. Every student has to be, every faculty has to be trained in mentorship, in peership, in counseling, in identifying psychological distress. Every student, should, every school should, and college should have a guidance yeah. and counseling center. No, absolutely. And I think it should, I mean, it's up to you guys to kind of take that initiative with the government over education policy. Now, you mentioned girls. Okay. I mean, I read a recent survey uh, that girls are more supportive of parents than boys, especially after marriage, you're getting a job, etc., etc. While we still have this prejudice that, oh, we should have a boy child kind of a thing. And I also read somewhere that the girls feel more parental pressure and also social pressure, especially in the villages, that why do you want to study? We've got to marry you off. Or, and the girl has her own ambition, it's slowly is changing. I mean, the girls want to kind of, you know, because jobs open up and you know, girls are getting more independent and also exposed to media, blah, 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 whatever it is. So, do, does, I use eminent education, is, is there any, any, any real concerted move which has been education, I mean, like, governmentally baptized or institutionally baptized to really make girls into a powerhouse of education and this kind of, and that would actually change the, change your gender equations as well. I, I, I think, uh, you know, one of the real problems in the area of suicide prevention in India has been uh, a lot of knee-jerk uh, and uh, what appear to be simple and easy solutions being done without actually being driven by any evidence or data. So, for example, we have a national suicide prevention strategy. I mean, most people don't know we do have a national suicide prevention strategy, uh, which has not yet been implemented fully. Uh, we know that there is, uh, there are UGC guidelines for universities as to what they should be do doing to no, prevent. That's not my question. I'm, I'm focusing on girls. I'm, that's yeah. not a general question. But I'm my question, only so, on women. so exactly, my point is that what happens is that we we pick up. See the, there are interventions which can be done. Which will, ad which will address this problem of suicide with girls or with boys in education no, no, institutions. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at gender sensitization, basically suicide and girls, con you know, connecting the aspirations, basically. But if, we just yeah. if we just implemented the policies which we've drafted, which have all of that, we would probably be doing no, but better. but the reality is different, no? <laughs> the reality See, is different. My first uh, question is, I don't know where you got that survey from, the statistics that girls tend to take their lives out more than boys. National, so National Crime Records Bureau is the only record of suicides nationally in this country. Under the age of 18, girls outnumber boys between the ages of 19 and 40, 
men outnumber women by about three is to one. The scientific studies that I have uh, gone through talk about boys being impulsive and their hormones raging, multiple um, things happening at the same time, they tend to take their lives faster. I'm quoting you the national or data. Suicide, that is from the research part. You were asking about the women. What I feel in my practice, I, or what I've seen in my practice is, women have been empowered so much that they are very strong-headed. They know what they want. Unfortunately, we have not prepared the men on how to handle the empowered women. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I think, I think, are we running out of time? Um, I want to ask you a question. I, okay, you want to continue on this yeah, particular topic? Equality yeah, on, any, on anything, e disc discrimination on anything will lead to distress in students. If it is based on gender or economy or uh, uh, intelligence, or any, any other uh, social factors, if there is discrimination, that will cause distress in the students. So we have to, as a, as a society, we have to move towards a culture of equality and non-discrimination. If that is imbibed in the administrators, faculties, uh, students, parents, and in the public, when, the, when the, cult, the society moves towards equality, this gender bias will disappear. No, that's an ideal situation. No, what I was going to ask you was, um, you know, Parental pressure is a huge thing, and it's not new. But, I mean, people are committing suicide because they think they haven't done well in school, mm -hmm. or they've only got 90%, but not 100%, and also because the cutoff thing is, kind of, is also a, hu a huge issue. Now, you know, parental pressure, because parents want, I mean, it's almost as if the parents are, you know, writing the exams, you know, as if as the parents are going to get the job. So how do you sensitize the children or separate them? I mean, syllabus is another thing, the number of books are all a different issue altogether. But the simple human fact that children are individuals on their own right, and they are not in the business, so they are not supposed to kind of, you know, succeed to, succeed to, you know, make you feel proud. That's a primary thing. Make you proud is fine. So have educationists ever addressed this problem that to sensitize the children that you're people on your own right, you don't really have to study to kind of, you know, make your parents proud of you or to kind of meet their bills when they grow old. But Suicide prevention is a very broad category, a very broad area where each and everything is important. Parental attitude and parental approach definitely needs to be addressed. So parents pushing, putting pressure on the children will definitely increase their distress level. And vulnerable children may resort to suicide. So changes should occur in all aspects. So maybe you should, uh, have, maybe you should have a counselling for parents as well. Uh, Ravi Shankar, I have some good news for you. Right. Okay. <laughs> At the school level, we have come up with career guidance assessment for the 9th standard students, 10th, even 12th. So we meet with the par in the Parents Teachers Association, they invite the parents, we sit them in and tell them about what your child should do to keep your family's pride. No, it is what the child's skills, interests and abilities are. So career guidance assessments are given, and now a lot of parents are open to um, sending their children to the choices of their skills, interests, and abilities. That is good news. It's ha been happening. It'll get better. Absolutely. I'm giving you hope. I, I think we need to look at su the issue of suicides, uh, and, and we don't even talk about attempted suicides, which is a real pro even bigger problem. Uh, but we need to look at suicides as a public health issue. And we need to look at suicide prevention as a public health solution. You know, what are the public health issues that we, or things that we should be doing? And, and let me tell you that one out of three suicides, one out of three women who die by suicides in this country have a history of gender-based violence. Okay, now if you wanted to really address suicides, you have to address gender-based violence. One out of three men who die of suicide have a history of alcohol or excessive alcohol consumption. So, you know, if we took a public health perspective on looking at how we're going to bring down suicides, the two big things that we need to be intervening in is gender-based violence and uh, alcohol consumption. There is caste-based violence also. There exactly. is kind of empowering. The but, the, but the one thing that I think educational institutes need to do, and having spoken to the directors of so many educational there is a feeling among the directors that two, fee two things that come across and which are myths. One is that oh, only the weak students are going to be dying of suicide. So, you know, if they are if they're attempting suicide or dying of suicide, they're weak in some sort of way, which is not true. Uh, and the second thing is that 
if I don't acknowledge it and I just shut my eyes to it, the problem will go away. Yeah. Uh, you know, n neither of that happens. So, getting directors of institutions to acknowledge and actually put in place uh, systems to prevent it is really the big challenge for suicide prevention. Today. Okay, now let's look at a political aspect of education. One thing when you drive through India, especially small town India, the number of English training institutes have mushroomed like crazy. I'm not even mentioning Kota. I'm just talking about even small places like Kordwa, small places, so many of them. And uh, I know a couple of uh, friends, sisters, who were kind of teaching English. Most of them are most grammatically wrong, right? Now, I hear cases, I mean, I, I think a couple of years ago, I read a case about a student who had committed suicide because he was made to feel inferior uh, because all his, and he, he came from a poor family, a rural family, and I think he was a scholarship student, uh, something like that. And uh, because he couldn't speak English, not that anybody tormented him, because he couldn't speak English, he felt he couldn't compete. Now, you can't blame English for that, no. all right? I mean, you need, the thing is that you need English as a vehicle to, because it is not a colonial language, it is a global language. So you need that connectivity. So is it, so that would, I think, bringing a global language as maybe a second language, I'm not saying make it the first language, being, you know, making more, them more fluent in it could actually stop disappointment which could lead to suicide. I think the education department here in Tamil Nadu already has approved um, lectures in Tamil for the medical students so that they can understand the anatomy and the science of it. So I think it is happening what you're talking about, the language that they are comfortable in. Success, I don't know about the school Success is level. always rewarded and failure is always down, uh, uh, downgraded. That culture has to change among the exactly. parents peers, teachers, whenever a student shines, he is uh, celebrated like anything. Whenever a student fails, mm -hmm. he is looked down like anything. This dichotomous thinking should change in, in the society. Then only uh, there will be, uh, the distress level will come in the students. So major right. changes are required. Now time, time you got a last point? You well, uh, since you brought up the issue of language, my last point is actually about the media. Uh, you know, the way media reports suicides is actually contributing to the problem. And we've been trying to sensitize the media to do better responsible reporting of suicides, which is just not happening. Uh, you know, we, we, we've been monitoring the Indian media for like four years, uh, giving feedback to them, and there's really no change. There are na international guidelines which are routinely flouted by Indian media when they report suicides. Now, why is it important? Because there's research evidence to show that how media report suicides can reduce or increase suicides by about 2%. What does 2% mean in the context of India is with 200,000 suicides, you're looking at 4,000 suicides. Just getting the media to report suicides more l rationally, logically, and following the guidelines will mean 4,000 lives saved. Now, that, that's not costing the media well, There's a difference between television, which is called media, and we and the news. No, no, I'm talking about, I'm talking about you media. No, no, about no, no, the media, the whipping, media. The media is the whipping boy for everything these days. So, I mean, yeah, part of it is true. But now that we're winding it, I mean, I'm sure that there are enough young people. I wouldn't say contemplate a suicide, but how many of you have said, my God, I've had enough of this? Congratulations to the panel for having deliberated this most sensitive topic of suicide and what institutions can do to combat suicide. In fact, it's the responsibility of the entire stakeholders of the institution to take a cudgel against this malaise so what's of... The what's the question? That's a statement. I am, not, question? I am not asking any question because already you have made, given enough insights. I am only making this observation. Uh, Shastra University, Shanwa College, was the first in the entire country to have a dedicated psychologist in the campus. Which year was that? It is 1996-2000. No, universities like Shastra are very advanced in terms of... You know. So at that point of time, to make themselves available for students to air yeah, and you. share their thank you, sir. actual grievances. I, I need some questions. Does anybody have questions? Oh yeah, there is, are you young enough to have gone to school? No, I, yeah, okay. audible? Yes. Yeah, hi sir, myself Sri Hari from Shastra Institute University. I'm doing my MBA. 
Now my question is, I'm uh, being a proud student of commerce. I have seen multiple uh, parents and multiple places, even in uh, not even in a rural, in a town places where the parents are stress parents as well as few teachers. I don't want to mention the colleges and the name of it. Few teachers are stressing those uh, students who are getting uh, great ranks in order to uh, join in engineering or doctor. They don't have given in the choices of commerce. Whenever the teachers just say, okay, if the students are interested in commerce, you can join them. The only perception that says is, commerce is for banks, I don't want my banks. So what is the question? So uh, how do you convince these parents to, in order to uh, make sure, take, take choices for the students? No, I think that answer has already been given in terms of communication. So really short of time, thank you so much. Really been a pleasure.